This is my Road to Rank 1 series, where I take a brand new account and bring it all the way to Rank 1 in the world. Last season, I was able to make it all the way to Rank 4 in the world, but I couldn't get to Rank 1. So I'm going to be trying one more time this season to get all the way to Rank 1 in the world. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm placing in the first position on this board. And there's already a lot of really strong spots that pop out to me. There's the 854 right here. There's a 5810. There's also this 693. And there's also this 5810. The three spots that really stand out to me is the 854 because it's just pure orbit sheep. There is a 5810. And then there's an 8510 here. So what's fascinating here, this 5810 is not bad because you get sheep and wheat. But you got to figure out what's going to be left for you. I think that this 84 is actually going to be taken by someone if I decide to do 5810 here. Will I be getting wheat on the way back? Probably not if I take 5810 here right and someone's going to take this someone is probably going to be taking this 4911 is also going to be taken and 34 is certainly going to be taken if i simply take the 854 here i wonder how often someone takes the 810 and how frequent is that so i'm going to be getting something like the 910 maybe yeah okay so i'm actually going to take the 854 here there's enough space on the board where i think you can justify taking 854 and then point left the biggest thing I have to worry about is basically the 569 player getting two roads and cutting me off to this 810. That's the biggest worry that I have. Since I think the spot that I end up taking is probably going to be something like the 910, which is not the greatest. But I could also see a world where black. Yeah, I think this road might be a slight mistake. The safer move on the E54 is definitely to point forward downwards. Since now with more further calculation, right? Since Black always likes taking this 5810 here, and what the spot that goes well with this 5810 is this other 810. So I think this road, if I wanted to be super safe with it, I think pointing downwards is always really safe. Yeah, this is a problem here, this road. And that means if Black ends up taking this 810 over here, what's the last spot that's going to be open for me? I wonder. I could actually get 91011, which is really strong. Uh, I could get 6311, which is also uh, very strong. Wrong, and I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, 693 is also very, very good. In general, yeah, 854, it's hard to go wrong with it. But also the opportunity cost of not pointing left is just very, very great, right? Because the 810 is such a strong expansion spot for me. But I can see myself in a lot of the times where, you know, Black takes the 810, then the 569 player goes here, points left, goes in the 910, and I just wasted a road. But I still stand by the 854 as the first pick. I'm just looking at the board right now, and it feels like the 854 literally goes with every single pick. I'm trying to search for, like, a second settlement that the 854 does not go well with. And, like, even, like, worst case scenario, right, I can literally even take the 810 myself and, like, take my own expansion spot. And it's not even that bad of a setup, really. It's actually pretty good. I do have weaknesses, for sure, as in, like, my own 8 or can be solo blocked, and that, that just destroys me and stuff. I mean, that, that's pretty bad. I could also straight up just take the 910 and like getting the two wood start is not the greatest and it's just like port fuel, but it's still not that bad of a setup. And honestly, if Black does decide to take the 810, it's actually better for me because now there's even more space on the board. I'm expecting to get maybe something like two 910 or the 910. So we'll see here. It really depends on how my opponent's placed. Specifically, it depends on how Black places on um, their placements. I wonder if the point left. Okay, okay, cool. And I was wondering if orange would fall for the trap, point the road left, and then it's very common here for blue to take 6311 and instantly plow them, or, you know, black to do that. So good job on orange to not make that beginner mistake. So now it's fascinating to me that blue took the 569. They're going to have an overload of wood, and they have a choice now. Do they want to take something like, you know, the 6311 to go in the wood port, or maybe something a little bit more balanced in terms of resources, and take something like the 4911, or maybe something like the 91011. Okay, just so they can actually use the brick. And the idea is to expand to the 4-3. I like this. Okay, cool. They decide to do that. And they start off with the free road. So there's a few options. I can take my own 810. That's the safest move. I could also just take this. And then it forces blue basically to hold on to the plow over here. Yeah, I'm essentially hunting for the early brick to make sure that blue doesn't plow me. Yeah, and I think that's my only option here is the 910 and I uh, 910 point upwards. Is there any other option here? Yeah, I mean, my only really other option is you could argue 6-2 to 5-2, but I'm not a super big fan of that. You could also potentially do the wood port, but I think you have to take the 910 here because essentially this is it taking around like four points of like raw slash free production. And also it does give me the double wood start, which makes it a little bit more likely that I can actually roll into some woods to three for one for a brick to defend this 810. So I think this is just the best move here. And I end up not getting plowed in the 810. So this is going to be fascinating. I'm looking for an early 7, and I'm trying to dodge early 10s. Okay, cool. I think the only move I can do here is I got to do this. Cool. And I have to brought from blue here. 
So yeah, like in this spot, you know, like they're upset at me, but I have to just rob from blue here. Yeah, I'm just trying to apologize to blue so blue doesn't get pissed off. But in this position, right, it's really, really critical to make sure that you don't get plowed in the 810. The steal is not personal. The steal was basically if like I'm needing to try to destroy blue's game as much as possible because they're threatening this 810 plow. And if I obviously take the brick and secure it, well, that's pretty good for me. And you could argue that like if I get a wood from black, that's not as that, that bad. But yeah, like see, like if I don't do this, right, blue's hand would basically be like, you know, two brick and since they're on six and nine wood they can easily easy plow me but now that doesn't happen so i'm not gonna get instantly plowed which is pretty good for me so a five rolls this is fascinating so he's still looking for that second brick and i'm gonna really try to hunt down for the second brick here i'm gonna say no to this trade although i'm actually gonna take it so i'm gonna instantly say no to this trade okay let's try doing something like this brick wheat is what i'm gonna offer we're gonna do something like this in two cards let's see if orange says yes to this and if he says yes that's great if he says no then i just take this two for one Okay, I have to take this wood. I have to take the, uh, the two for one here. Yeah, I think that's fine. And this allows me just to secure this 810, and I need this 810 really, really badly. But I can't also help but think maybe I don't need to do that. And the better move is just to simply just buy a dev card in that position. Since so I'm actually giving up a lot in that spot. I mean, orange in that spot, like, it actually makes sense for them, right? And from their point of view, right, they get a sheep, which they don't produce, right? Yeah, they get a sheep that they don't produce, and they also get an extra card. So I think it makes sense from their point of view. Okay, 11. I do have some weaknesses inside this game. I do have a lot of weaknesses, and that's mainly going to be this 8 ore. But I got this expansion spot, which was really, really, really needed. Okay, 11 rolled. Another brick here. So there's two options here, right? I can decide to buy a D card, which helps defend me a lot, or can simply decide to hold for the city. So the good news is basically Black is probably going to play a knight card on his turn and rob me. And if he robs me, it's going to put me at five cards. But the thing is, there's not a really great spot for him to rob me. I think if he's smart, I think the spot is actually going to go on the eight or. But since he wants to block two players, I can see him putting on the five sheep and robbing from me. And that makes it so I want to hold for the city. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to hold just because eight, five, four city is just so, so, so good. And I already have a three to one port in this situation i feel a little bit bad for blue because i had to block and rob them but i needed to save passage yeah blue's gonna say no to this since they're gonna rob me anyways i don't think he actually robs from blue i think he robs from me here yep perfect yep 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 so this is exactly this is exactly the situation that i wanted so now i can still roll into the city with an eight and i didn't want him to steal any of the ore wheat materials cool cool and then he's going to try to build on the 4-3. What's really good in my position right now is that like this 4 wheat is actually soloed. So this 4 wheat is all to myself. So my opponents don't really ever want to block the 4 wheat. Theoretically, theoretically. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Since I had a lot of winning, had a lot of like outs in that position with any 9, 10, or 8. And now I'm going to be forced to hold at 7, which is a little bit ugly. I think I'm just simply forced to hold. There's nothing I can do here except for hold. So I might be in like 7 territory, but even if that happens, it's I'll be fine. Okay, now this guy's going to be still looking for that wheat, and this time he can also pay two cards. But the problem now is I don't really, I'm not interested in a trade because I'm at seven cards myself. Okay, so they just did a trade here, and it was basically wheat for brick and sheep. Yeah, yeah, nicely done, nicely done between my opponents. And now Black actually has a pretty strong setup where they can go and fight for a road. And I think like the key here is actually to, um, you need to plow orange all the way through or connect through this way. But plowing orange allows you to get this settlement spot and this settlement spot very easily. So I actually really like that move. Okay, cool. I rolled an eight here. And this is where I really need to go and essentially start tracking. Since if I roll a seven on my turn, I'm only going to have like a half city, essentially. Or I'm going to be missing the wheat. So I need to keep three ores here. Okay, well, ends up not mattering, which is great for me. And I just have to drop a city here. Yeah, I think this is fine. Just drop a city on the 854. It's just way too good of a city spot, I think. And then from now on in this position, all I do is basically buy dev cards. I've got my settlement spot. I've got a super strong city. And all I do here is just buy Ds. If this was like a normal game, what I would do in that position is basically, hey, I'd give blue insurance. Like, hey, would you want insurance in that spot? But one, like they're already perceiving me as a leader and the insurance in that form would just be like, hey, uh, I'll take a free card because that way blue doesn't get seven out. And they have also have a lot of useless cards in their hand right now. This is a good hustle trade since trying to get two rare cards you don't produce on your turn. Um, but I think he probably plays an aggressive knight here. Oh, he goes after black here. He plays an aggressive knight, unblocks my eight or I don't think that's the right move. I think in that position, right, you need to be trying to communicate a little bit more. I don't actually like ranked games that much is because it's harder for you to flex your creativity since you're literally under the time clock all the time. So in a position like this, I got to make a choice now. Do I simply three for one a brick over here on the 810 or do I simply just buy a D card in this position? 
position. The brick here is not bad, but look at this from my opponent's point of view. As soon as I settle on this A10, I'm like a mega monster, and this eight or is going to be permanently blocked, like literally forever. I think here you might actually have to port this for an or and buy a D card. I think it's a little bit more actionable compared to the settlement. As soon as you get four points, you just get blocked forever. And I am getting blocked forever, but the opportunity cost of being able to block my opponent's eight wheat here is just too strong. So I think you actually have to do this and just start buying the uh, start buying dev cards. It does hurt, obviously, because a settlement on the 8-10 is very good. But I think you, I just need knights. This is a perfect position, right? My opponent just wasted their knight to unblock my 8-or. I had to capitalize off my opponent's mistake. Yeah, okay. Build road first. Yeah, they're trying to buy that D card. But yeah, like, also, black's position is not bad at all. Yeah, black's position is definitely playable. Like, I mean, you have the wood port here, and you have a bunch of extra bricks. And, like, they are actually set up to connect for road. This is going to be fascinating, since both blue and black are going to be lacking space. But black has a little bit more space. Yeah, black decides maybe go to this four brick, or goes to this 11-12. And then they can also go to this 9-12 to fight for the space. But in general, it's really tough for blue now, since they just don't have that much space. I just have to simply hold. Some people right there might play an aggressive knight to try to steal wheat, but I don't think that's necessary. I need the knights to be used basically to defend for the um the eight or and the four wheat. That's what I just need to defend on. And it's okay if like I can be patient here. Sheep for wheat, that's a deal. Trading brick red. Perfect. So essentially orange is extorting the table. That's fascinating. I try to exploit the system. I'm gonna say I'm not doing it. I actually take it. Dang, okay, okay. So they got the trade. There they got the trade anyways together. Damn, damn. I, I was trying to like right there, I was trying to be a little cheeky and basically be like, don't worry. I'm not taking this trade and work, be like, say like, hey, Black, do you want to work together and say no together? Or you can both say no to this trade so he doesn't get a settlement. And then after, as soon as they see that, it is still going to be remain checkmarked. And during the lag time of like, oh, I'm going to miss a trade because we're working together. Oh, Red's still accepting. And I can just get a deal right there. I think in that spot too, what I need to do is I need to offer two cards. That might not even be worth it. Maybe in this spot, I think if I did a trade last turn of like wood sheep for wheat, I think that was probably like the, uh, the move here. And I really don't want to be left with no no sheep that's the problem here of course if i get a four here i get a second city but the question is do i even go for that second city okay cool they decided to do this okay so i should be getting robbed here probably on the eight or but yeah yeah and it forces out a knight for me and now i think in this position i i've got to go ahead and hunt down that last or 10 just rolled the question is do i roll before oh man that's bad that's bad for me i think the move here is i roll first since i don't want to seven myself out but that's unfortunate i'm gonna move the knight here and actually there's an argument to not even move the knight i've got to do this for sure uh, let's see if he says if he is willing to take an or for wheat trade here okay cool perfect with me and then i'll do or for wheat with orange but this is a perfect time to say no and scam me okay cool Yep, yeah, okay, okay. Well, I should have realized it. I should have realized it. This is a really good spot for Orange to scam me. Really well done by Orange right there. That's actually a perfect spot to scam. And I called it out. I'm like, this is a great spot to scam. And then I have to also like be cognizant that like this is a spot where it's really likely to get scammed. So uh, really, really well done by him in that spot. Now I've got to make a decision here. Do I hold at seven or do I pour all my cards? I'm actually gonna hold because I think I get jacked pretty often here. The other ideal is I was really thinking right there to pour all my ore to settle on this 810, but I think that makes me a little too vulnerable. I'm taking a massive risk now because if a seven rolls, it just puts me far behind. I wish I had more time to think about that decision last turn. It might it might have been worth it just to port everything. Okay, road building. Oh shoot! No, dude. Wow, damn, damn. He got a road building, dude. I probably could have saw that coming. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad for me. It's not the worst thing in the world, though, since I still have a settlement spot here. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I got a Dodger 7 here. 8. Cool. Cool, there's no time. There's no time. I just have to go in that spot. Let's pop again. The Knight card. And then I've got with this last road in my hand. I think it's just worth it to save this settlement spot here to make sure that blue can't fully plow me. I think it's fine to do this. Yeah, I'm gonna... I decided... I could have gotten a city right there, but I think this is fine. Losing the 8 is not as bad as I think because um, it, it is pretty bad, don't get me wrong, but whenever you get plowed, it shifts the table perception a lot.
Cool. And orange rolls a seven here. And this is a time where I say like, I have no ores well, with orange, but he's going to probably try to extort me. I, oh no, no. Blue, blue rolled a seven. Blue rolled a seven. But yeah. There's no spot for them to block me. So it's going to go on the eight wheat pretty easily here, which I'm very happy with. Obviously I got my little win of the game. I don't know what happens now. Yeah. Blue still faces the same problems, right? Like he still faces the problem of like, what are you going to do with your settlements? And I think blue's path to victory in this position, right? Is four city longest road. If you look at their position, now they have a three to one port. They got two wheat spots, two ore spots. They also have this. So I think blue who's going to path to victories. You need a city and start playing for four city longest road. Buying dev cards also isn't bad. Okay, I've got to roll. A, yeah, I've got to dodge sevens here. And now I have a tough choice. Do I continuously buy two more Ds or do I get a city on the 910? The city on the 910 is only okay, but two more Ds allows me to really fight harder for army. How much do I care about the city on the 910? Because essentially what happens with the city on the 910 is that it's basically flexible production. And I already have two knights, but getting two more Ds here is not bad at all. I think I like the 910 city because I already have two knights here. So I think this is actually fine. And I'm also falling behind in production. So this catches me up a little bit. I think this is fine. I think this is okay still. 11 rules. Okay, they pop again. Now I think public enemy number one is probably black here. And with four down Ds, it's, it's definitely black, I think. And I might have to also just start playing aggressive knights, really. I don't think so. Not yet. Not yet. It's a city. Blue's also starting to do well. But they have a very transparent game, so I'm not too concerned. They have to get basically three more cities. A city for eight points. Maybe a city for nine points and then road settle. They also have to defend road. So they're not too, too far off. They could also simply pull a VP. That's also on the table. And it looks like that this guy does not have a knight either. Fascinating. Yeah, the eight wheat is just too strong and I need to have it consistently blocked, I think. But it's just annoying since Black's going to exert his position on me and basically put it on the eight ore and then have his like wheat unblocked for the rest of the game. But also got to think about, okay, Black clearly has a monopoly here. Okay, let's call it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do, roll this. Oof, 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 oof. And I just have to pass here. Is there anything I can do to play around the mono? I can pour my wheat or I can pour my sheep, but I don't think that's a good move since he has to make a decision here. If he wants to hold the knight here or does he want a mono? And I think if he monos the sheep, it's not the worst thing in the world since he's three for winning all the sheep. The thing I'm afraid of him doing is monoing the ore. So he's going to play a knight card here. Cool. Good, good. That means he can't play the mono. So I'm not too afraid yet. He decides to block this. Fascinating. Okay, another 11 rolls here. So blue's still doing good themselves. They're still very, very close. I'm also wondering, like, is the idea of me dropping the city on the 910? Was that a mistake? Okay, cool, cool. I have another turn, I think. That's good. 7-7-7. Seven, seven, seven. That'd be pretty good. And blue has a very front-facing game. I'm hoping to roll 7 here. Perfect. Perfect. The problem is he dumped some wheat. So it's not as good as I think, actually. Cool. And I'll just do something like this. And I think the move here is to block and rob red, actually. Let's do something like this, which seems weird. Okay, I'm going to rob from black here since he's still got three down Ds. Yeah. And you can also jack red. So I think this is fine. And I give black or blue this trade here. Cool. He says yes to the trade. Perfect. That's good for me. Let's play an aggressive knight. And then let's put it back on the eight wheat here. And I'm going to rob black, I think, again. Cool. I'm going to get that second sheep. And now I have to go ahead and port this for another D card, I think. So this is an interesting spot, right? I can either port a settlement, which I don't think you should ever be doing here because the settlement doesn't do anything, but the dev card actually advances your game. The settlement spot is just a settlement spot. It doesn't really produce me anything. So I think this is just the best move. And then I buy D. Yeah, just lie. I actually really like Orange's mentality of like, just lie. And I know it's like an unpopular opinion. People like to be like, no, 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 you can't lie. And the, if you think about it, but the greatest weakness of all this extortion, especially in ranked games where it's like you don't have to hear each other's voice, you just lie and it, it screws over. Especially like if you're put in a really bad position, you can just like make a deal where it's like, yeah, 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 of course I do it. And you just get away with it. So I'm going to roll seven. Damn. OK, I can mono sheep there still. There's still a lot of sheep on the board. I'm pretty sure black doesn't have a knight card here. And because I'm pretty sure black doesn't have a knight, I don't have to actually take the largest army. So this is a pretty big risk since I'm basically doing two table reads. And it's read one is this guy doesn't have a knight when I'm way more solid on this. Read two, this guy doesn't have a knight. And this one is, this is a lot riskier of a read. That's the risky one. Okay, get another knight. So now army is more secure. So how am I going to get my last point since I get seven points with army? Okay, cool. This guy doesn't have a knight, but he has a mono. And that's what I'm worried about. Cool, cool, cool. Uh-oh, this is a little scary. Yeah, cool. So that read basically of black not having a knight was correct, since obviously want to keep it on the eight wheat if possible. So for me to get my last few points is I have to settle here on the 10 wood. Okay, there's there's a mono. There's a mono. 11 wood mono. Okay, he takes 
three wood for me. Okay, cool, cool. And he secures this. That's good. If he drops the city also, uh, it's not too, too bad. I mean, 11 wood mono is not bad for blue. But I would want to focus on trying to get those or wheat monos if possible. Yeah, I mean, like, they're eight points. It's not a bad move at all. Yeah, I, th I think it's fine. I think it's fine uh, for black. Oh, okay. If he buys a D card, which I think he does, now it forces me to play my own dev card. So I'm going to play a knight card first and then block blue, I think. So it seems weird. Why am I playing the knight card first? But essentially, I'm setting up for my own Monopoly. So I'm setting up the open 8 wheat and 8 ore. So I think I'd do something like this. And I'm needing to plug the ore so a lot more wheat can start to accumulate on the board. Okay, ends up not mattering here. The question here is, do I hold or do I pop a dev card? So the idea to hold here is because I have a mono and I want to keep my hand super flexible, right? Because if I hold and an eight goes off, like just imagine eight goes off, my opponents don't use a wheat. Even if I only get three wheat, my hand becomes mega actionable. Or if it's just like two eights roll. Or I can risk just to be actionable right now and just port this for a wheat and buy a D. It's fascinating. The thing is that there's not too many Ds left inside the deck also. I'm going to take the bigger and bossier play, which is to simply just hold. I, I think that that's a play I need to do to win. It's a little dangerous, but I think that's fine with me. Eight. Oh, okay. So the eight ends up rolling and it's pretty good for me. The problem is it rolled directly on Black's turn and I want it to roll not on Black's turn since now Black gets to use that wheat. So if I mono wheat, right, I only get two wheat now. So it's not even that good. Yep. Yep. And he continues to buy another dev card. Okay. Oh, ooh, ooh, nice. He doesn't. He doesn't. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I just got to I just got to hold. I just got to hold. Okay. So right there is really, really bad. I made a huge blunder. I needed to talk to Orange faster and be more proactive because what happens now is because he gets that trade. Now Orange basically ports three wheat for an ore and buys another dev card. And I need the wheat to be on the board. Oh, 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 fascinating. OK, cool. No seven. I just need a not seven and I'm bare golden here. Oh, damn, that's so bad. That's actually probably makes me lose the game, I think. Yeah, since this is a perfect time to wheat mono. Okay, let's see if he still lies to me. Let's see if he still lies. Okay, cool. He still does lie. Unfortunate. So I basically took a calculated risk, that right there. I didn't know that he was lying, but I knew that Orange is a frequent liar. So I, because I knew that Orange was a frequent liar, I was like, do I want to trust him again? And I'm still willing to try to take that risk because in this spot, right, when Blue's at nine points, I'm just forced to try to rob Blue since he's at eight points with a D. So it's just a little bit ugly of a spot. I needed a seven to not roll right there. That, that's really, really bad since I had a huge turn, basically. I guess I have to keep holding. There's around five wheat on the board. I, I just have to wait. Okay, another eight rolls. There's even more wheat on the board now. I think there's precisely seven. Lying is a new no- Yeah, I, I don't mean- I don't blame Orange at all, right? Because, like, this guy's at nine points, right? It doesn't really make sense. Okay, cool. Road boating. That's actually great. That's great. That's good. That's good. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, he, gets, he drops a city here. Oh, he buys two Ds. That's bad. That's bad. Okay, since he buys two Ds now... Nine. Okay, he buys two Ds. Yeah, I have to play a knight card for sure. Because he's threatening my largest army. And I think I have to rob blue. Yeah, I have to just rob blue here because they're just too close to winning. And I think this is a good spot to block. Yeah, I think I just have to block something like this, which seems weird. Yeah, I got to do this and just rob from blue here. I get a wood, I think. Yep, yep. And now with this hand, there's a lot of options I can do. I got to pour for wheat for sure. And I've got to make a choice. Do I settle? It's really unfortunate that orange got to spend all of the wheat. My monos suck now because yeah, I have to defend army more. So yeah, okay, I got to do this. Knight card. And I've got to port this for a settlement. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, I just got to do this. And then I got to settle. I got to settle. Okay, good, good. Yeah, in that spot, I don't think I should be getting robbed. I think it's... um Okay, perfect. Good, good, good. I think blue still might have the win in hand, maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. Okay, so this guy's at nine points. This guy is also at nine points, too. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. This guy has two VPs and a knight. Okay, interesting. Yeah, black at nine now. Okay, I get robbed here. He takes my ore. It's a little unfortunate. Okay, he takes the ore. Worst things have happened before. And the question is, do I ever hold to not pop here? Okay, I think it's fine for my opponents to actually rob me here still. Just because I do have that mono. But I have to try to get a mono and get a point here. And it might still block this, which makes my own mono like counterintuitive, I think. Let's just block this. Let's just block this. And at this point, my goal is to mono to get a city, and then I need to road settle really badly. And I have to rob from black here, since they're just winning. And I have army locked now. Yeah, it's black. Eight. I think it's fine to block that. Actually, I made a mistake right there. Shoot, I made a mistake. The mistake right there was I needed to port my two, three sheep for a brick in that spot. 
I need to like not pass my turn as fast, which seems weird. I know that like you're probably cringing listening to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big mistake right there. Oh, jeez, man, jeez. And I have to dump the sheep since no, no, dump the ore and dump the ores here. Eight ore and I move it. Like my opponents are still robbing me, but makes sense. I get double robbed. Interesting. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is last turn. I need to drop the road. That was actually really, really bad. Yeah, this is not good. Obviously, I can't do anything now. I could mono sheep. I could mono sheep. I think I had to, actually. Sheep mono is not too bad. But if I sheep mono, like, yeah, th that last turn of not dropping that one road was really, really bad. And, I, and as soon as I did it, I was like, shoot, that's a mistake. Okay, I think I have to sheep mono here, which is not my favorite. But I think it's just defensive, and it just gets me another city. I think this is fine here. 10 sheep mono. So now I have to make a decision here. Okay, I got to port one set for wheat for sure. Th this is a forced move. Now, I have to make a decision. Do I want to port for a city or a road settle? And I think the move is a road settle. Yeah, I think it's a road settle since that's a harder objective for me to do. But if I didn't make that mistake last turn, um, I'd be in a much, much better position. Yeah, now I'm close. I actually think it's like the right move for my opponents to continuously block and rob me right there. Like, you have to basically like deny my mono since... In that position, like, I've got the power because I have the mono. So, like, Black is actually, although I'm, like, you know, trying to say, like, oh, Black's at nine points and he's doing really, really well. The truth is, because I go right before Black, I can control if Black gets to ten points or not. Okay, fascinating, fascinating. So, I just need a four to roll. Ten's not bad. Now, I'm one card off. So, now I need a nine, ten, there's five, yeah, nine, ten, five, or four. This is massive, this is massive. I need to dodge sevens, too. Take this. But why would he ever want to take this, right? It's not like he has the game. I'm confused. Why do you take that? Trade an ore away? What? Makes no sense. Okay. 9, 10, 5, 4. Any of these work. 9, 10, 5, 4. Let's hope for no 7. 9, 10, 5, 4. 10. There we go. There we go. Okay. Whew. That was close. That, wait. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Two wheat and one ore. And that's a city. Thank God. Okay. And that's GG. Okay. Whew. There we go. There we go. That was too close of a game. That was really close of a game. Blue at nine points, black at nine points, and an orange just sitting there. Let's look at this game. So first of all, the 9-10 is definitely the right move. At least securing one of my settlement spots is really important. The plow by blue here, I don't think is actually as bad as I said, because porting the ore in general is really, really awful. And getting this 8-10, it shifts the perception of, oh, red's not in the lead anymore. And I still get what I need, which is a settlement spot. The production on the 8-10 doesn't actually matter that much. I think it's actually kind of fine for me to get plowed. And what I ended up doing with the ore instead of porting for it was I ended up using it to buy dev cards and getting a city. In terms of mistakes, I think that I need to consistently think and take my time to make my decisions, which, uh, you know, I, I know, I know, I already, I'm already slow. But this is why I am slow, is to not make any mistakes, right? Because the last turn where as soon as it ended my turn, I'm like, shoot, I need to be porting my sheep. And that could have costed me the game. Like in this position, I'm basically one card off from not winning the game. And if I was able to save one of those sets of sheep, well, I might have really missed one. I might have not been able to win. So I've just got to be very careful. And I find it fascinating. But at the end of the game, the sheep actually plummets in value. It becomes very, very useless because if there's no more dev cards, well, what can you use sheep for? You can only use it for settlements. But also at the end of the game, everyone's basically settled out. So the price of sheep is kind of just like useless. So in that position, I'm like, I don't need any more sheep. I need to just be spending it. And I need to recognize that faster. But overall, this is a really good game. So in this spot, I got raw basically just as much as black. And in this position, I was able to buy seven dev cards. So because I was able to buy seven dev cards and orange is also able to buy seven dev cards, it was very, very close in terms of who got largest army. I just happened to buy seven dev cards faster compared to orange but in this game i didn't really out purchase dev cards and compared to my opponents it was very much of a coin flip in terms of who got largest army so i'm grateful that you know i got largest army since i needed it for my game also offered a total of 29 trades a lot of different trades but only got one through but i think it's in general it's really important to be active in trading to uh, try to score as many deals as possible because if you trade well you can overcome bad dice anyways hope you enjoy the game and i'll see you next time Bye bye